Good morning, good evening, good night, whatever it is, wherever you are. So YouTube is going to hate this video because, well, we're dealing with serious subject matter. Uh, so I don't expect this video to gain anything, but it is news, and uh, that's what I'm here to give you, and it's pertinent. Now, this video is two days old. It's from the 24th, but it, it, still, uh, it still holds meat and potatoes. This is from Mirror UK. Man stabbed to death in East London in third fatal knife attack in 24 hours. You see, human beings being human beings, you can ban guns, then you'll have to ban knives. Then after knives, you'll have to ban forks. Then after forks, you'll have to ban lamp posts. Then what? Bare hands? I, I mean, if somebody is going to do something that horrible, they're going to do it. If somebody's going to attack somebody or 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 murder somebody they're going to do it and this is the third fatal knife attack in 24 hours and this was from november 24th but let's let's read this met police officers were called to a fight in the seven kings area of ilford east london at roughly 6 a.m today november 24th and shortly afterward a man was found with a fatal with fatal knife wounds you just if somebody's going to do it they're going to do it it's just Making something illegal doesn't make the criminal stop doing it. A 24-year-old man was stabbed to death in East London this morning in the third knife death to strike the capital this weekend. Three. Met police were called to reports of a fight at Seven Kings, Ilford, shortly after 6 a.m. today. No one was found with injuries, but a short time later, a 24-year-old man was found nearby with, a, with stab injuries. He was taken to hospital, where despite the efforts of medical staff, he was pronounced dead at 12.36 p.m., Scotland Yard said in a statement. His next of kin have been informed. A man in his 20s, believed to have been involved in the same fight, also suffered knife injuries, but his condition is non-life-threatening and he is recovering in hospital. So it appears that they both had knives, they both had knife wounds, and uh, you just, you can't, you can't stop it. And everywhere you look, it's, it's the same story. I've lived in many different cities, and everywhere it's the same exact story. If you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. The next town says the same thing. The next town says the same thing. Our crime rate here is so horrible. The next town says the same thing, and the next town says the same thing. It's because we see what's around us, and we get pretty absorbed into it. And sometimes I think people in the gun ban camp that we want to ban guns, and there are people that say they want to ban all guns. That's ridiculous. You're leaving the law-abiding populace without a means to protect themselves against criminals who don't care if you make it illegal or not. But this just showcases that you can't stop it. It's everywhere. And banning one thing just makes the next thing. Uh, it's hard to get firearms in the United Kingdom. You can get them, but it's hard to get them. But their knife crime is pretty high. This is a map of where the crimes happened in London. No arrests have been made. It is the latest death in London as the knife crime epidemic continues. A 26-year-old man was found stabbed to death in a car outside West Ealing Station in West London in the early hours of today. Again, that's November 24th. And a 27-year-old man died and three others were injured in the knife fight at a house party in Whitechapel early on Saturday morning. The UK has gotten to the point where they are banning kitchen knives and they are making knives that are dull and without points and things like that. But I think we're attacking the wrong problem. The knife is a tool. It's there. We've had knives for a very long time. We've had murder for a very long time. It's not the tool that we should be going after. It's the why. It's what makes it happen. What makes the person tick? What can we do to affect the human portion of it, the environmental portion of it, the societal portion of it that says, hey, you know, I'm mad and I'm upset and I'm going to go take it out violently. And believe it or not, I firmly believe, and this will for sure demonetize this video, saying these two words, 
freedom of speech. Right there, my video is demonetized. And I proved it with the video that I posted just earlier today where I was making a mockery of YouTube news saying that we couldn't say anything. And I literally said nothing but puppy dogs and rainbows and butterflies in that video. And guess what? It is unsuitable for most advertisers and it has limited ads. The only thing I said in there was free speech in the very beginning. That is the only reason that I can think of that it would be demonetized. And when we limit speech, we are taking away the ability to tell somebody via verbal ninjutsu, if you will. Verbal wrestling. Logic and reason and telling them why their ideas are bad and bringing to the table our evidences and listening to them and hearing their point of view. And if you're someone who doesn't hear your point of view or your speech is limited or whatever, you're, you're limited to action. If we could bring people to the table and have a conversation, and I know this is absurd, but what if, what if, what if we got to a point where we could bring two opposing gangs together at a debate table and verbally work out the differences, have a verbal battle? One that's based in fact and reason. I know, I know, it's absurd to even think that we could get to that point. But, you know, I mean, what if we could? Well, the more you limit speech, the more you're limiting the capabilities of somebody to be able to even try to attempt to do that. And that includes listening to the other side. We are all guilty of it. We all want to be right. We all have our biases. I don't like violence of any kind, of any sort, but the knife fights and the fatal knife stabbings are just an indicator of it is not the tool that you go after that really makes the difference. I have never in my life seen a gun jump off a table and shoot someone. I have never in my life seen a knife fly off the shelf and repeatedly stab somebody. I have seen humans do that. So then do we go after the tool or do we go after the human? Do we try to stop it by banning the tool or do we try to stop it by predicting and figuring out what is going on with the human and how do we stop this? And perhaps it's just someone that says they want to be heard. Maybe, hey, what is your opinion? Why are you so upset? What is going on? And how can we take care of it in a non-violent manner? And it sucks that just by covering this topic, just by having this point of view, this video is going to be demonetized. This channel is drowning. And I am spending my own personal money to keep it afloat as best I can, but it is drowning. It is just drowning. I feel like YouTube is rubber stamping it for failure because reasons. Because we can't handle these topics today. We can't handle dissenting opinions. But when you can't handle a dissenting opinion and you live in this little echo chamber how shocked are you gonna be when the real world slaps you across the face and says welcome to the real world hear dissenting opinions and voice your own opinion and violence is not the answer but trying to ban something that that is a tool is not the answer either it is just not Anyways, I have rambled on way too long. This video is not going to make anything for the channel, but it will hopefully make people aware. And maybe get some likes and subscribers and comments on the video. Some sort of interaction, because right now it's just an ant screaming up. But I don't care. These are things that people need to hear and things that people need to understand and... Well, come what may, it's the people, it's the humans that make this happen. It's not the tool. Anyways, that's enough. I've rambled. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you guys on the next one.